Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you my updated Cyber Dragon deck. Not a lot has changed since the last video, however I still wanted to chat about the build that I'm running and I guess my decision for the card choices. I am still only running two Cyber Dragons. If I was running a Machine Dupe, I would run another one, however I'm not, but I think I will be running it in the future. I just like Clockwork Knight and Rivalry Warlords too much, and I feel like I can't run both, so that's why I'm only doing that, but probably three Cyber Dragons in the near future. Three core, pretty obvious, you just have to. Only running two hers just for space purposes. Two Naxter because one doesn't seem like it's always enough. As we get later in the game, it feels more grindy and Naxter becomes even better. Naxter can also kind of be a starter, whereas hers kind of can't be. But yeah, I don't really want to start with Naxter, but it is nice to draw into a couple turns into the game. Running Chimera because I still run the OTK builds. Too good, too fun. I enjoy it way too much. Cyber Elton in because it still comes in handy exactly when I need it. Maybe not exactly, but sometimes there's scenarios where I just need a board clear and this is the answer. This actually did come up when I was playing with my friends over the weekend. He had some dumb board and I had no out to it, so I was able to search Elton in and summon it. We are running two Galaxy Soldier because I do like to have the Xyz and you know easily go into Infinity and Nova. So these are all the monsters, no hand traps, no nothing like that because this is a going second build. And I just wanted to opt into playing more board breakers as opposed to hand traps. Obviously in this current meta and format, I think maybe adding Nibiru probably makes more sense but again i'm not super into the meta game i don't actually know exactly what's going on i know cash tier is really annoying and you kind of need the biru i think this deck is pretty adaptable you can easily run the biru just take out some other cards technically i am running infinite impermanence so this is more of a flex spot in a sense that could easily be in the Biru. But for my build, I'm not really worried about cash tier because I'm just playing with friends. But anyway, moving on to the spells. Cyber Emergency, you just have to. Same thing with Cyber Dragon Core. One Repair Plant because it does come up and it is another searchable thing. In case you already activated Emergency and you want to get another search in. Cyber Dark Realm is important for the combo and the OTK. I am running one Rev System because it, it does come up. I don't really want to see it early in the game. I mean, sometimes it happens, but as the game grows on, you have more Cyber Dragons in the graveyard or you want to special summon another one from the hand, but it's usually from the graveyard. It can become very useful. The card it has come up i wouldn't say it's absolutely needed but it has come up triple tactics i really like this card again it might be a little more meta dependent if people are running hand traps and such but the card works a lot of people are going to run hand traps anyway and if they do this punishes them pretty severely two power bond because of again otk one's not enough i mean you could get around with one but in case you draw it in order to activate chimera's effect it needs to actually resolve and that means you need power bond in the deck it can't be in your hand love power bond do you run the three clockwork night? We're not running the theory on package. Actually, that's another question people ask me. I think it's probably good and it probably makes more sense now that you can run clockwork, but this deck is already so packed of things. I can't have a big enough deck. I keep trying to cut cards and I feel like I'm playing fine without the theory on stuff. So I guess that's my rationale for that. I really do like clockwork, but it definitely does brick in this deck. If you can get clockwork night and rivalry to be on the field, the game is pretty awesome and it almost secures your win. But those cards alone on themselves kind of feel brick in a sense. Rivalry also isn't as good in many other decks too. And there's no way to search Clockwork or Rivalry. So I do like this, but I think maybe a little more competitive build might be the Machine Dupe way just because your, your opponent has to negate that. If they don't, you're getting so much value. But yeah, that's the internal struggle that I've been having for a while now is Clockwork Knight, Machine Dupe, Rivalry. A lot of good cards out there. They're all fun, but which ones do you play? Kind of comes down to the preference. Three Rageki, can't have enough fun board breaking cards. Love this card. Running Harpies because I really don't see a reason to not run it. Call by because you kind of just have to have it. Change the heart. Again, my favorite magic card. Prada Prosperity because I just, I pulled one in a pack. I wouldn't actually go out and buy this card personally, but I do have one. I would probably run an extra if I did have it, but I don't, don't want to spend the money. Let's move on to the traps. Evenly matched. Easily the best board breaking card in the game. The previous build I had didn't have this because I think the card was like 10 or 15 bucks at the time, but I think I picked these up for like three or four bucks really nice this card does is not a replacement i think for any other board breaking card because evenly mashed is probably the single-handedly in my opinion best board breaking card it just hits everything obviously later in the game if you already have a board set up you can't it doesn't really help you out but again this is more of like an otk style deck although it can grind out games but i'd rather otk playing evenly matched on your first turn to destroy your pole opponents of board sure you don't get the conduct your battle phase but who cares all their stuff's banished except for one thing obviously do you have two infinite impermanents i think this can easily be things to get taken out again by nabir or some other hand trap or other board breakers if you need two of these and the pot of prosperity i don't think this deck needs the pot it's okay it's not bad but if you're playing in a pretty cash tier heavy meta or some other heavy meta and you need certain cards i think those are some good flex spots rivalry because we do have the clockwork, obviously. Again, it, I like it. It's not good in every matchup. 
unless if you get the clockwork and the rivalry on the field, but it's kind of not rare, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. And the last card, we got Cybernetic Overflow. Just too good when it comes up. Untargetable removal. And if it gets destroyed, you get to have another Speller Trap or Cyber Spelling Trap. Out of all the Cyber Dragon decks I've ever built, this is definitely the most traps I've ever had in one. I am kind of considering running another Cybernetic Overflow, maybe even the Cyber Load Fusion card, but we'll see. That's a conversation for a different video. I know I'm going to get some questions asking about it. What do I think of this new Evolution End Burst? Haven't actually tried it out yet, so I don't have an official opinion, but I think since it's unsearchable by core or any other cards that we have, I, I don't think it's that good. Again, I'm going to be willing to try it out. Maybe it's a lot of fun, but I'm saying from a good point of view or like a maybe more competitive, I don't think it's that good. But try it out. Have some fun. For the extra deck, we got Cyber Twin, we got Cyber End. You don't really need Cyber End, but it comes up sometimes when you're having some fun. And if I'm playing with friends, I want to have it. And then if the opportunity comes up, I'm going to be playing that card. You can also send it off Nova if it Nova does get destroyed. But again, that's not really going to happen too often. It's just more of a fun pick. Two Rampage, one's not enough because this is our go-to. If it gets negated or destroyed or something, having another option to go into is really good. I like Eternity, even though... Yeah, when I think about it, this doesn't come up enough where I feel like I need to have it. I don't run the Horizon... Or cybernetic horizon so getting in the graver is not that easy but i've there are situations where you want some really big heavy 5600 attacker with 4k defense it comes up it's just not a often later in the game if you dirty have a fusion in the graveyard this thing becomes almost unkillable running one mega fleet just to get rid of stuff in the in the extra monster zone two fortress dragons i think i was running three but you really don't need three i think three is way too many two gets the job done and it doesn't take up that much extra deck space running one nova one infinity so this is probably something you could do is you know take out the eternity and cyber end to add another nova infinity but i like to be more versatile running the gear i have not summoned this card yet the only way to summon this is by getting two rampage dragon or fortress dragons out and overlaying so i haven't actually done this but if the opportunity comes up i do want to test that out do have double a zeus this card's like 30 bucks now crazy I think I summoned this card like once in my life, so I need to try and summon it some more. But yeah, Zeus, pretty good. Link monsters, we got Seeger. You just need it. We got Lina as just some other option. The reason why I added Lina back, I'm not sure if it's the other build, but there are situations where I just need to like remove something from my field. Like if I change a heart or something and I want to you know get it out of there. And some other really random situations, but that's the only one I can think of. So it comes up when it's needed. That's kind of why I have it. And Salamander, because you got to get Cyber Dragons in the graveyard. And that's an easy way to get hers in the graveyard. Or Core to proc a repair plant. So this is my Cyber Dragon build right now. The main thing changing is the evenly matched. I will try to get some games in testing out this card, but... I don't have super, super high hopes for it. I do want to go back to the Machine Dupe build. Now that I'm playing a lot more Master Duel, I am running the Machine Dupe build because Clockwork is not in there. And I really like it. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of different ways to play this deck and a lot of different ways to have fun. So nothing's really right or wrong. Obviously, it just comes down to personal preference. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for some more Cyber Dragon content and I guess Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Take care, everybody. See you later.